the title here of your uh, your series, uh, World Religions, Cults, and the Occult, but yet you've been super busy. The Lord's been blessing you, and, and you've been researching. And talk about this this series as well as in the, the rest, kind of the, the whole progress okay. of the series that you've been doing. Yeah, actually, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked, because a lot of people don't know the, the history of it. Uh, basically, I started a study called World Religions, Cults, and the Occult. Um, I joke, uh, I, if you look at the video, so it's probably back when I was 17 years old. I don't know, it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe like seven years. And really what got started me doing that was I came across a stat um, that said 25% of the professing church uh, basically believes that there's more than one way to heaven. And, and, and not the world, but in the professing church. Wow. And I'm going, you got to be kidding me. I came out of New Age. I came out of the occult. Right before I got saved, that was that's New Age 101, that all religions get you there, and that's part of the mindset needed for the one world religion that's going to appear on the scene in Bible prophecy, etc. That that nobody's got the the only way, which is a denial of John 14, 6. Yep. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. But I was surprised. I expected from the world. They don't know any better, but not the church. So I said, okay, we're going to dispel this. Right, we're going to go down deep. This is my background. Yep. Right, and we're going to do a study on all world religions, cults, and and the occult, the occult, and uh, to dispel that because basically when somebody comes up to you and says, "Oh yeah, oh, there's different ways to heaven," whatever, what they told you is two things. Number one, you don't know anything about world religions because they are diametrically opposed to each other. <laughs> there right. is no similarity. Exactly. Hello, yeah. yep. that's a lie. Number one. Lie number two. Apparently, you don't know anything about biblical Christianity. Yep. Because there is only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. So we started down that route. And uh, and so we we covered all the major world religions. Then the second section uh, was dealing with the uh, cults, and basically the pseudo-Christian cults. Pseudo meaning false or fake. You know, and it's in the Greek there. When Paul says false brothers, false apostles, false prophets, false teachers, it's pseudo, fake, false, mm-hmm. right? And so he's talking about fakers. So there's there's fake Christian organizations out there. Who'd you, who'd you cover? Oh, First of all, the big one, we dealt with Roman Catholicism mm-hmm. uh, for a 12-week study on that one in a book and stuff of that nature. And so they're one of the biggest fake Christian organizations yep. out there. They are not Christian because it's sacerdotalism. It's yep. a works-based false gospel. Uh, so we dealt with that. But we also dealt with Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian science. Well, it says Christian science has got to be Christian. No, it's not. Not even close. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we dealt with... Um, uh, like Seventh Day Adventism, yeah. we got some flack on that I one. Bet, I yeah. know some good Seventh Day Adventists. Listen, you go back to their teachings. Yeah. Uh, it's outside the Scripture. They're right? judged by their teachings, right? by their it, official it, doctrine. It, yeah. Right. It's called the investigated judgment. They yeah. don't even know if they're saved. They believe in the lie of what's called soul sleep, which is a perversion of the text. When the Bible says that people fall asleep, it's just, just a euphemism. Well, and it's based they die. on Ellen G. White. I mean, right. as, a, as a prophet, well, Ellen G. White. Where'd she get her info, dude? Uh-huh. We did the research. She got hit in the head. When she was a kid, got knocked out. I'm not joking, right? And kind of had some mental problems. And then later she becomes this prophetess of many, uh, dare I say, not just unbiblical things, but they hide her teachings away in what's called the the, the vault, the white vault, LNG White's vault. Because if you saw what she really wow. wrote, you can't see. And then they merge her teachings with their version of the Bible called the Clear Word Bible. But the only thing clear about it, it ain't the Bible. Yeah. You don't merge man or woman studies with yep. the Bible. It's crazy. But she taught things like what's called the amalgamation, right? Uh, and what's that? She, complete racist. She believed that the black African races came from an amalgamation between bestiality <laughs> with men having sex with animals. This isn't a writing, and you're going to listen to this nope. lady, and that that she had this secret ability to transport herself to heaven and back with these the angels give her secret code card. Is it what? And yep. you guys going to listen to this lady? But again, the big thing it's it's a false gospel, just like Mormonism, yep. a Jehovah's Witnesses. We do with that as well. Uh, they all believe that you got to do certain things, deeds, to get to heaven. Well, that's a denial of the scripture. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians two eight and nine. And but but they have what's called the investigative judgment that you don't even know. You suppose you go to sleep soul sleep, which is not what the scripture says. It nope. just means you died. So you don't take a cosmic nap, right? But they say, but, and then you go take a nap, uh, basically for who knows how long, until then Jesus, in the end, investigates your works. Yep. And then makes a judgment whether or not you get to go yeah. to heaven or not. That's works. Yep. It's a lie. Anyway, so we exposed that. So we did world religions, cults, the pseudo-Christian cults and things of that nature. Uh, and then uh, we even threw in Scientology. Oh. oh, that was fascinating. The <laughs> first three weeks, dude, was the occult, which it kind of was a great lead into the next uh-huh. third final section of the occult, 
was L. Ron Hubbard. Of course. And the occult background uh, with Aleister Crowley and all this stuff. And, and I'll just say real quick, um, the, he basically took what he learned in the occult and turned into, into a religion of the occult. For instance, I'll, I'll give you a case boy. He, he did occult black magic rituals with a gentleman in Southern California named Jack Parsons. His house was called the Parson Inch. Oh, and this is where they would do their occult rituals. Uh, and it's heavy duty black magic. And, but they would get their information from Aleister Crowley across the pond, right? And of course, this was before cell phones and, you know, internet. And mm -hmm. so you'd have to write off over to Aleister Crowley and they would say, hey, we want to go deeper. So he would, you know, write back and here's another spell ritual that you can do to go deeper. But he wouldn't give it up for free. In order to go the next level deeper, they had to give him money. Of course. Right? So they do that. They say, well, we want to go deeper. So they have to give more money to go to the next level and back and forth, back and forth. If you know anything about Scientology, that's their whole methodology. Yeah. You want to you go clear? You want to make it to the top? Then you got to pay your way up the levels. So even that yep. was how they called. But Jack Parsons, it was kind of a weird connection. Uh, he was the, the guy who hit up the JPL laboratories, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh -huh. Involved heavy duty in the occult. They were doing rituals. One was called Babylon Rising. And, and this is in secular prints, not a conspiracy theory. But L. Ron Hubbard and Jack Parsons were trying to bring in the Antichrist, which they, of course, think is a good thing in the occult. And by having a demon have sex with a lady with their rituals, the black sex magic and whatever, this is no joke. And they, they believe that, that would bring forth, you know, the Antichrist on the planet, which they wanted. This is the kind of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. So that ended up being a great segue, world religions, cults, and the occult, yeah. the occult. And again, been there, done that, wish I wouldn't bought the t-shirt. Again, I was probably multiply demon possessed with the stuff that I was involved in, not just Satanism, but New Age and all kinds of other stuff. And so then what's, then again, like everything else, well, we're going to be replete. Let's get with it. And, and, and just as a segue, you think, why do I need to know this? Because it's all over the Bible. Yeah. I say this all the time as I go through the series. Where am I getting this from? Reader's Digest? I'm just here to freak you out. Oh, every week, every study, we're quoting scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. This is all over the Bible. Why? Because God wants us to know about this, not to freak us out, but to warn us in love and to warn other people who are going there. And dare I say, know how to reach those people who are lost in this stuff. So, like I used to be, by the way. And so, but anyway, so we started off with witchcraft. Did a 20 week study of witchcraft. Then we did a 16 week study on Satanism, right? And then the third and final segment was a 30-week study that we simply entitled Voodoo, Vampires, and the Rise of Demon Worship. Uh, but it's, it's more than just that. We couldn't put all of them. But basically what I caught was what I call the subsections of the occult mm -hmm. that are also out there duping people, leading them astray, getting involved in occult practices. Yes, voodoo. But it, what's called the, the, the term, secular term for it, is what's called spiritualism. Spiritualism is what we're seeing on TV right now. Uh, with the ghost hunting, the ghost adventures, that this is my deceased loved one or some historical figure coming back to give me wisdom and whatever. No, it's not. It's a familiar spirit. It's a demon spirit. So you call it spiritualism all you want. You might as well just say demon worship yep. because that's really what you're interacting with de uh, demonic entities. That goes back into the seances and the Ouija boards. Did you know that they now have a pink Ouija board for young girls and things of that? This is no joke. This is what's going on. But uh, but so so we, we we go into the the voodoo, the vampires, but the spiritualism, that whole seances and all that stuff still going on today that's being promoted all over the place. But then we go into other what I call the subcultures, voodoo vampires, but also druidism, which basically is your modern uh, environmental movement. Yeah. Yep. Uh, with the worship of nature and things of that nature, very, very demonic. Uh, we bring that shamanism, another one that we bring out, shamanism. Shamanism uh, kind of a, a little bit uh, was part of my background because that was a big part, not the only part of New Age. New Age is a hodgepodge, a little bit of everything. And, uh, but but uh, the the being possessed, same thing with voodoo, with spirits to give the ability to have a word of knowledge or prophecy or healing, you know, the witch doctor, American Indianism, using uh, peyote or mescaline or marijuana. Yeah, of course. I yeah. had a whole study on there on that, that I couldn't wait to get out. And I got shaman, male and female shamans on tape saying the drug of choice for them as shamans to be possessed by the spirit, the fastest one to get them there, Marijuana. Yep. Right. And then what's being legalized all across our country? Hello. And you think, and you wonder why things are getting so demonic yep. out there, Mondo? 
We're encouraging people to use the same drugs the occult is using to connect them with the spirits, i.e. demons. Yeah. And then we even get into uh, uh, vampirism. You go, well, that's just uh, Hollywood movies. No, it's not, unfortunately. So we, we went down that route. And again, unfortunately, like with other occult practices, witchcraft and even Satanism, Hollywood, the music industry, is encouraging people to get along with that. Certainly, Harry Potter, we go back in our witchcraft study, we even quote the witches who, who gleefully admit that that has been by far historically the best advertisement for their wow. craft. Yep, they admit it. And then you got Christians out there going like, "Well, I, I, it helped my kid read." I'm going, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> you this is one on one witchcraft. <laughs> Whatever happened to C Spot Run? That, yeah, that's how about right. that? You know, Dick and Jane or something. Yep. You, know, you you need a witchcraft book to yeah. teach you something's wrong there. And then we even quote uh, young millennials uh, admitting being raised in a whole environment of Harry Potter. They're now full blown into witchcraft, and yeah. they admit on tape it was because of the Harry Potter. They wanted to become a witch. Yep. They wanted to become a warlock. They made it a attractive. Yep. So it's a joke. So, so the point is, same thing with vampires. The Twilight series, Mondo, there's a whole subculture out there uh, that is getting involved even in that uh, with the youth. And, you know, uh, one of the, it's not the only one, but one of the big subcultures is the goth. Yep. You've heard about the goths. They drink in the black and the tears and yep. you know, all that stuff and the ashen look and whatever. You it's a whole go to the stores, it's all goth. Yeah, exactly. And, but what goes on behind the scenes with a, a lot of that community is vampirism. And vampirism, uh, which is forbidden, shocker in scripture, because God wants us to know the truth. And he shares these things all over the scripture and is you don't be drinking the blood. And yep. part of the occult, and not just vampirism, but part of the occult is the drinking of the blood. That's the life source, the life power, and that you're going to gain power and, and, and special abilities by drinking the blood. Uh, another gross thing about that is part of their rituals into acquiring that blood from their victims is they believe that when you're getting the blood from the victim, and it ain't just animals, mm -hmm. it's people, mm -hmm. including children, um, that that you you don't just do a quick one. You 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 make them uh, experience as much pain as possible oh, wow. as you're bleeding them out, and it's sick. But this is what goes on. And dare I say, we are not doing any of these people, including children, who unfortunately are being abducted mm -hmm. for these things. A servant. We're not doing him any good a service by keeping your mouth shut. Yeah, by denying it. We should be it. blowing the whistle on this yep. man, and and uh, let alone it's a biblical uh, topic that we need to address. But they believe that the more that the person, the victim suffers, then the greater power in their blood yeah. and things of that nature. This is what's going on, Mondo. It's, it's not a joke. It's sick. It's satanic. But again, you're going like, how could this happen? Well, because keep reading the Bible, you get to Revelation. Revelation nine says what in the last days. Yep. In the seven-year tribulation, society is going to get so bad. Their hearts are going to be so hard. Even amidst these judgments of God, they still, it says that they refuse mm -hmm. to repent and get right with God. Even in the sealed judgments, even at that point, they admit, they know this is coming from the wrath of the Lamb. They know that God's wrath is being poured out on them, but they, they, they refuse to get right with Him. Why? Because they would not stop worshiping demons yep. that's a cult activity including pharmacaea yep. that's mentioned their drugs which is also going involved with the occult but also dare i say their thefts and their murders which is huge in the occult sacrifices and things of that nature uh so it's a biblical topic through and through but again god says you're going to see the planet be covered with this occult activity but dare i say it's much further progressed than what people want to believe and dare i say even the christian you know why silence yeah. There's complete silence on this issue. And not only silence is they don't even recognize the occult because they've never even been taught the basics. Uh, in, in fact, each one of these studies, witchcraft, Satanism, uh, and voodoo, vampire, shamanism, druidism, including basically what it ended on was the first occult secret society, yeah. uh, Freemasonry. But including with Freemasonry and voodoo, vampires, witchcraft, Satanism, all the other ones, they codified their beliefs in symbols. And every time I finish the section, and I challenge them at the beginning, I says, now once we get through these symbols and I explain to you what they mean, you're going to freak out in a good way and realize I had no idea how much witchcraft had permeated even my neighborhood or culture or city or town. Because I'd seen the symbols, but I didn't know it was a witchcraft symbol. Yep. I'd seen the symbol, but I didn't know that was Satanism. I'd I seen the symbols... Including when I go to cemetery, I didn't realize that was Freemasonry, <laughs> right? And things of that nature. And so once you do it just with the symbols, because what they do is they symbols, they do their things in secret in the dark, including Freemasonry. 
And it's kind of like a code word. Freemasonry has secret handshakes, right? She, secret gestures, posture, stance, vest, and here and things of that nature. Well, the cult does the same thing, and they 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 basically will mark their territory, let you know that they're in the territory, or so other people involved in the craft. Which, by the way, that's what Freemasonry calls itself. Yeah, the craft. Uh, yeah, exactly. They just left out one word: which uh -huh. witchcraft. The same thing. And uh, but the, but they codify their beliefs so that people can know that they're in the area or here's where they're doing the rituals. You know, so the people in the know through these symbols, right, uh, can can uh, discern. Uh, you know, are they in the area? Are they one of us? Are they part of the, is there, the, the group? Is there, in the midst of, you, you think about a, maybe a, a witch's coven over here, and then you got a, you know, a Freemasonry lodge over here, and, and you, whatever, you have these other, do they, is there ever any levels of competition between them? Uh, I don't know about competition, because Satan, and this is what's sad, when you read the scripture, I'll never forget this, first time it hit me. You look at uh, Ephesians 6, and it says there that not all of our, Paul's very clear about this, that uh, not all of our battles are just flesh and blood. It's not always natural. Yeah. Sometimes they're what? Spiritual. But then he get, begins to give you a breakdown. Powers and principalities and rulers of darkness, you know, things of that nature. And so what you see is you see that there's a hierarchy in, it, with, with Satan, mm -hmm. right? And that's clear. And guess what? Unfortunately, that hierarchy works together. They're unified, Mondo. Well, say, Jesus said that Satan's kingdom can't be, be divided against right, itself. Right, exactly. So they all work together. So to answer your question, uh, they don't compete because that's they, they want as many people to go to the lake of fire as, as they can. Mm -hmm. But Satan puts out as many different false paths as he can, including the cult or pseudo-Christian cults mm -hmm. or false world religions that will never lead you to heaven, right? And and they're all working together in panoply. He, he, didn't, he didn't put all his eggs in one basket. He's just coming up with many different ways yep. to lead people astray. But they all do the same job. So they're working, I believe, in concert. It's all the same root. It's all from Satan. What's sad is you see that from the scripture that Satan, as evil as he is, and his evil cohorts, the demons, they actually work together. Dare I say, as a team. As a team. And you know what's sad? How are we doing as Christians? Yeah. <laughs> Disunified. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the truth. And we got the truth, right? yep. And so I don't think that's by chance because Satan knows the power of unity. He yep. uses that. Yep. But that's why I believe he works so hard to keep us Christians divided. Well, it's, you know, it's just the, that phraseology comes straight out of, you know, Genesis 11 with the Tower of Babel. God looks down and says, 